In this video, we will learn how to create a horizontal navigation bar using the float property. You may see navigation coded using the display property and the inline or inline block values. That may work in some situations. You may also see people creating navigation using CSS positioning. That is not the industry standard, so please do not use that. This is the final result of our navigation bar, and this is what we'll be starting with. Industry standard navigation is created using the UL element, the unordered list. Every link is placed inside an individual LI element. We are enclosing our unordered list in the nav element, as that is an HTML5 structural element used for navigation. Because a navigation bar is a collection of links, it is semantically necessary to use the UL element. Should you be coding an individual standalone link, you do not need to use the UL. You may just code in the anchor element wherever you would like. The first thing you want to do whenever you're working with structural elements is to use the CSS outline property and place a, an outline around each element so that you can actually see where that element is on your page. So notice I have a blue box which represents my nav element. I have another box which represents my UL. I have a box for each LI. And I also have a box for my A elements. The A element is an inline element, and it is only as big as the text it contains. That is the red box. It is hard to see the different colors because they all overlap. Everything else is a block level element. So what we need to do, we need to put a width on our UL. We need to get rid of the bullets. And there is also some left padding that we need to get rid of. So we will work with the unordered list to begin with. So here I have my CSS selector. I use the list style type property set to none to remove my bullets. The padding left property set to zero pixels to remove the padding. I'll also make some adjustments on my margin. I will set it a width of 750 pixels. And because I want to center this, I will set my right and left margins to auto. Now you can see that my unordered list is at a fixed width and it's sitting inside the nav element which is a block level element, you can see that element because it has a blue box around it. So I cannot emphasize enough the need to work with your outlines on your elements so that you can see what you're working with. Also do one thing at a time and test it so that you know what's working and what's not. The next thing we need to do, we need to place our LI elements side by side. We will do that with a float property. Because the LI element is by default 100% width of its parent container, we also need to put a width on them. We will make them 150 pixels, therefore they will fit perfectly inside our 750 pixel unordered list. Rather than using pixels, you could also use percents. Here you see my selector, and that selector applies to all five of those LIs. We are giving them all a width of 150 pixels. We are floating them all left. We're also going to center the text, and we'll put a background color. Now we can see that our LI elements are all 150, you can see where the A element is. It's right in, centered inside. You can also see that the A element does not take up the whole width of the LIs. Another thing that has happened, 
Notice our nav element has collapsed. The borders have collapsed. When a structural element only contains floated elements, the borders collapse. That's usually not an issue unless you want those borders for some reason. However, what we will do, because we need to clear this float anyway, we will clear that float now. I am clearing the float by setting the overflow property to auto in my nav element. Now you can see that I have the border around the nav. You also can see that the border around my unordered list has collapsed because my LIs are floated. We'll work with that later if needed. The next thing we need to do, we need to work with our A elements. Notice that when I put my cursor over the A element, I get the hand, meaning it's a hyperlink. However, when I move my cursor to the right inside the LI, I lose that hand. We want the whole area to be clickable. We want that LI to be clickable. How you do that? You turn your A element into a block level element using the display property. Therefore, the A will fill up the LI 100% and the whole area will be clickable. That is a very important part of creating a navigation list. So here is my selector, the A that is inside my nav element with this ID nav top and I am setting the display property to block. I am also doing some other styling. We will take off the hyperlink line. We will create a color for our link, and we will make it bold. A few more other things I'd like to point out. As you recall, if you set a width on a structural element and you add a border and padding to it, the border and padding is added to the width. Now we already calculated the width of 150 for the LIs. If we were to add the padding and the border to the LI, it would not fit inside our UL and we would have to recalculate. However, if we add the border and padding to the A element, which is inside the LI, we solve that problem. Therefore, when you're working with navigation, always put the padding and border, if you're going to have it, or even any margins, in the A element, not the LI. That way they will be added to the A, not the LI, and you don't have to worry about calculations. The other solution would be to use the box sizing property set to border box. We're just about finished. Now, when I put my cursor over the box, I see a hand everywhere. Finally, we will create a hover effects for our navigation, and we will get rid of our outlines as they were only guides for us in determining the correct layout. So here we have our, so here we have our A colon hover structural pseudo class and this is a selector that will allow a style to be displayed when the cursor hovers over that A element. So we will change the background color and the color of our text when that cursor goes over the A. Remember that our A is now a block level element, so no matter where the mouse cursor is, the hover effect is displayed. So here we have a very nice looking industry standard navigation bar.